Well, howdy, friends. Brian Fleshing and Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another one of our Q&A episodes, which, of course, we always appreciate the questions. Friends, keep them coming. We absolutely love them. Be sure, though, to send them to admin at madriveroutfitters.com. Unfortunately, we can't get to questions in the comments down below. I apologize. We can't get to them on social media. If you've got questions and you'd like them answered here on the YouTube channel to get your free hat and fly box, send them to admin at madriveroutfitters.com. If you have any general customer service questions, you pick up the phone and call us here at the shop or also email is fine there as well. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. That really helps us out. And uh, hit that like button, that just makes us feel good. I, I just kind of went through the box today and picked out some questions. Uh, to be honest with you, I think we've answered some of these before, but they keep coming up. So I, I want to do them again. Pretty simple uh, answers that you're going to see here. Uh, but anyways, let's jump right in. And John Preston. John Preston from Bluffton, South Carolina. Uh, John says, I fly fish for trout in North Carolina primarily. And oh, by the way, John, you forgot to give us your address. So if you're out there in YouTube land, send us an email with your address and we'll send you out that hat and fly box. Um, I fl fly fish for trout in North Carolina primarily. I watched episode number nine from our Getting Started in Fly Fishing program. It's right there. On leaders and tippets. I followed the tippet size from the hook size info, but what if you're using a dropper rig with two different size flies? How do you figure the tippet size? Well, John, this is a question I get three times a week, um, and, it's, and it's, a, it's a good question, and I understand it. But to be honest with you, it really doesn't change, okay? And let's take a look at this here on the whiteboard. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we're going to run a basic leader down to either a dry fly, maybe a big fluffy dry fly, maybe even an elk hair caddis. And then to the bend of the hook, I'm going to tie some tippet and I may run a nymph. Okay. And in this case, let's say that this dry fly is a size 12. If we remember back, take the size of the fly, divide by three or four, and we know that a size 12 fly requires 3x or 4x tippet. <clears throat> I'm really not going to change this right here. If anything, I would err on the thicker side. Since you are adding a little bit of weight to this, I'm going to err on that thicker side. So I, Whereas if I was fishing the dry fly alone without the dropper, I might go with 4x. If I'm adding a dropper, I may go up to 3x, but I'm probably not going to go up to 2x unless this is a really heavy nymph here. Probably not. So if anything, I'll err on the thicker side based on the general equation that you learned in episode 9, and that's really all I do. Um, same thing if you're running two nymphs, same exact situation, but again, if you're running a basic uh, if you're running a bead-headed nymph, say, and then say, this is something I love to do, and I've promised you before we're going to get out on the water here, even in the next couple of weeks. And uh, I like to run a bead-headed nymph and a soft hackle. And as you can tell, I'm not an artist, but I like to run a bead head and a soft hackle. It's a deadly, deadly rig. I've got some really cool tricks I'm going to show you. And same story, if I'm running normally 4X, uh, if I was fishing the bead head alone on 4X, I would maybe would go up to 3X, but really, but, uh, I, I probably won't, to be honest with you. I just tie on this. This is probably going to be 4X or 5X, maybe even 6X down to the dropper. And really, by the time that that momentum, especially on a nymph rig, by the time the momentum carries to that fly, it's going to kick over the second fly. So you really don't need to change much. If you're worried about it and you find it a little cumbersome to cast, 
just err on the thicker side from the basic equation, and that's, that's really it, all, all there is to it. But that's a question, John, uh, thanks again, that we get a lot. I, I get that two or three times a week, and hopefully that clears it up for a lot of you there. So, John, again, send us your uh, address, and we'll send you out that hat in the free fly box. So next up is Caleb. Caleb Deitch. Deitches? I apologize, Caleb, but... Um, but anyway, Caleb is from Eagle River, Alaska. And Caleb says, hello. I'm new to fly fishing, and in a lot of videos I've seen, I notice anglers stripping line in to land a fish. And in other videos, I'll see them using to, the reel to reel the fish in. That's what I'm used to in my experience using a spinning rod. Well, yeah, with a spinning rod, that's what you're going to do. But I'm curious as to why I've seen these two different methods. What are their purposes, and is one preferred over the other for different scenarios? I'm mainly targeting rainbow grayling, Dolly Varden, Bob Pike, and blah, blah, blah. I've lived in Alaska for 10 years now, and thanks to your videos, I finally felt like I can make the leap into fly fishing. Your videos have demystified much of it, and I've learned a bunch. Any advice would be appreciated. Keep up the good work with the channel, Caleb. Well, Caleb, uh, I, again, I think this is one that we've answered before. Uh, I'm not sure to be honest with you, but um, that is up to the fish. It's really up to the fish. And okay, you are you're fishing along, right? And you've got the line under your index finger, which is as soon as the fly hits the water, you've got to put the line under your index finger. I don't care if you're fishing nymphs. Streamers, dry flies, pike, musky, grayling, doesn't matter. The line must go under your index finger. Okay? And then you're going to have some slack here. And whether you're dead drifting or whether you're stripping a fly, you're going to have some, some slack. Okay? Now, if a fish hits, and I've got a fish over there. Fish, thank you. I've got a fish right there. If a fish hits and he takes up all that slack, there's your answer, okay? You're on the reel. You're now going to use the reel. You're going to take your line out from under your index finger. That's the first thing that has to happen. Let go of the line. If the, if the fish takes up that slack that you've got here, then you're on the reel, and that answers your question. It's not really a matter of your choice or choosing one method of the, uh, over the other. And then, of course, you're going to use... Keep the rod low. You're going to use the butt section of the rod to fight the fish. And then if he takes off running again, let go of the reel, and you're going to fight him from the reel. Now, if let's say around here you're bass or you're bluegill fishing. You can let go now. Bass or bluegill fishing, okay, and you're stripping, stripping, stripping. And boom, that fish hits. And, Okay, bluegill are tons of fun. One of my favorite things to do with the fly rod, bass are great. But a lot of times, they don't take up this slack. They're just not going to run that far or that hard, and I can probably handle them with just my fingers. There's a lot of trout out there, to be honest with you, that I can just handle with my fingers, and I'm not going to have to use the reel. This is in a lot of cases when folks are just fishing around here in Ohio for bass and bluegill. And there's no reason that they have to buy a really expensive fly reel with a high performance drag system because you're probably never going to use it. I mean, the truth be known, for average trout fishing, you're probably not going to use the reel that much. You can just bring the fish in with your fingers. Boom, you bring him up to your feet, you release him, you let him go. And then to make your next cast and to shoot the fly line, you don't have to strip anything off the reel. So uh, it's, it's a great question, and it's one that we get a lot. I hear it every day in my life, so I don't mind answering it again. And Caleb, uh, we've got your address here. We're going to send you out a hat and a fly box right away. We appreciate you watching, and please stay tuned, um, and let me know if you have any further questions. But that's a good one, but it's up to the fish, and it's not a technique or a method that you're going to choose necessarily. All right, Steve, Steve Thomas from uh, Pilot Knob, Missouri. I know Pilot Knob, Missouri. Uh, I used to hang out in those parts when I was a kid. 
Uh, but anyway, Steve Thomas from Pilot Knob, Missouri says, I have learned so much from watching your YouTube videos. I am pretty new to fly fishing for trout. I know you need to change the X size of a leader you have according to the size of your hook or the weight and wind resistance of the fly. My question is, do you still have to change your leader if you're using tippet rings? Can you just change what size tippet you have on the tippet ring? Thanks for all of your help and the great information you put out on your channel. I hope to make it to your store one day to take a class or just to shop. So Steve, we appreciate you being here. Thanks a lot. And another great question, and this is one we get a lot, and tippet rings. Tippet rings are useful. I do use them. Uh, we've done quite a few videos on tippet rings. Uh, we'll probably link one or two of them uh, right up there. But a tippet ring is, is um, a simple metal ring that you're going to install in between your butt section and your tippet. That's how they got their name. So let's say that you've got a 4X liter, an average 4X liter. This is going to be 3X and then uh, 2X back here tapering back to your fly line. And this is going to be your 4X tippet. Um, I'll, it depends, Steve. It depends on what you're doing. Um, if you're dry fly fishing, I may not want, if, let's say, your question is, can you just willy-nilly decide all of a sudden that you're going to go from a size 12 fly to, say, a size 20 fly? Can you all of a sudden just cut this tippet off and go to 7x tippet? I, I, I probably wouldn't, okay? Because you're making a jump from 3x to 7x. That's going to be a hinge right there a big hinge and it's just not going to cast very well. It's actually going to collapse a little bit right there. Um, if you're nymph fishing, and we're going to explain this further, uh, we've got big news coming at you here, spring of 2021. Uh, we do have a book in route that's going to explain all this stuff. But if you're nymph fishing, I don't mind having that hinge. In fact, I want a hinge right there. If I'm using this for bass or bluegill fishing and I'm fishing a fairly significant bug, absolutely you do not want that hinge there. So I would say um, yes, you can change the diameter on your tippet, but number one, it depends on what are you doing. Okay? If you're nymph fishing, great. That hinge is not going to hurt you. It may even help you. If you're casting, you're actually making a straight cast, and you want that loop to go down the fly line and to go down the all the way down the leader right to the fly, you really don't want any hinges. So when you get down into that business part of the leader, you know, uh, I'm certain that a lot of people can argue this, and, and so could I. But number one, it depends on what are you doing. Number two, I, I typically wouldn't skip more than about 1x or 2x. So in other words, if this is 3x, that's the final diameter in your midsection, or call it your butt section, to where that tippet ring is attached. Just on average, I'm typically not going to skip. I'm not going to go to 6x or 7x coming right from 3x. Okay? So don't skip more than about one or two numbers when you're then attaching tippet to that tippet ring. Okay? But again, it goes back to what are you doing with it. And, and I think if you stay tuned, we've got a lot coming at you the, when the end of the line finally hits bookshelves. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of videos to go along with it. So, uh, Steve, stay tuned. And then number two, if you have any specific questions, pick up the phone and call me here at the shop. It's, it's really that simple. But I hope that helps out, and I hope it helps some other folks because we do get that question quite a bit. Okay? So, last up today is Chris. Chris Henke from Lakewood, Ohio.
Well, Chris, we're neighbors. And this looks like uh, Chris and I communicated via email quite a bit. This goes back to early fall 2020. Um, and Chris's question had to do with about his left hand technique or the opposite hand technique. We'll call it the line hand when he's casting. And he said, after you strip the line back, I will cast and strip the line back to cast out again. I've tried a few different ways, uh, blah, blah, blah. The issue that I'm trying to avoid that appears to be happening is that the line crosses over the butt section of the fly rod. And again, Chris, this is a question that we get a lot. We see it a lot in, uh, in people out fishing. Uh, we see it, people are constantly contacting me via email saying, hey, how do I prevent this from happening? And what you're talking about happening is when you go to shoot the line, the line winds up wrapping around the butt section like this, okay? And it's, it's a really simple fix. So I tell you what, let's step out back of the shop. I'm going to show you this real quick, and I'm going to show you how to fix this forever and ever and ever. Okay, Chris, we've stepped out back of the shop here. I wanted you to see this. Uh, I know I responded to your email a while back, but we get this question a lot, so I wanted you to address this and uh, allow you to see it. Okay, so let's, let's start here. When you go to make a cast, okay, you're going to take the line out from under your index finger, and you're going to pinch it here in your line hand. All right? We're going to pinch it here in the line hand, and, of course, we're going to double haul double haul, double haul, and then we're going to inevitably shoot the fly line, okay? And then as soon as that fly line hits the water, of course, we're going to put the line under our index finger. That is the crux of the control system in fly fishing. I don't care whether you're fishing in North America, South America, catfish, bass, trout, carp, the line must go under your index finger of your rod hand. And then again, to repeat, to start the cast, we're going to take it out, we're going to double haul, and we're going to shoot some fly line. If your line is wrapping around your rod, the chances are is that you're just letting go of the fly line willy-nilly, and you, you don't want to do that. You let go of it, but you still kind of hold on to it. And what I do is kind of form a ring, almost like an additional stripping guide on your rod that you're allowing that line to feed through there, okay? But you're also cupping the line and kind of helping it feed through there and you're keeping it far enough away from the reel to where it's not gonna wrap around anything. So you're gonna double haul, double haul, and feed the line through your fingers like that, cupping it, and that's gonna prevent that from wrapping around the rod or wrapping around the handle. Now the other thing that can happen is you might be shocking the system. When you come forward, you're shocking the system, and of course that's gonna cause it to wrap right around the rod as well. Okay, you don't wanna shock the system. It can also kinda of be that you're coming forward too soon. You don't wanna come forward too soon. We've talked a lot about that, but if you shock the system, it's probably gonna wrap around the reel, wrap around the butt of the rod, and then, and then it's going to take you time to unravel all that. Meanwhile, you might have had two fish eat your fly. You've got to focus on getting that to lay out nice and straight. Line comes under the index, and as quickly as possible, you gain control of the slack, the system, and the fly. Okay? You don't want that wrapping around the butt section. So control it with your hand, keep it out of the way, and don't shock the system. Don't come forward too soon. Hope that helps. I promise it will. All right, so there you have it. Always remember to bring your rain gear. Uh, we really appreciate the questions, friends. Keep them coming. Keep them coming to admin at Mad River Outfitters. Remember that I just can't go on social media. I apologize, but it's just not my thing. I tend to be a little bit too busy, and we just can't get to questions in the comments below. So send those questions over to admin at madriveroutfitters.com or pick up the phone and call us. We're here to help. That's what we do. So be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, stay tuned. 
2021. It's going to be an amazing year. Thanks for being here. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.